Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here. Welcome to a new series here on the channel that I'm going to give a go. Definitely would love to hear feedback, would love to hear if this is something of interest to people. Maybe ideas of what you think would be a good way to present it. I've got an idea, but basically what I'm going to do, because the focus here is on FS Economy, which is a universe that I've talked about in other videos a little bit of the how-to and so forth so I'm not going to get into it a lot here as to what exists the intent of this series that I'm starting is to take you on the journey with me as I work through this I think my process is going to be to basically capture the information for anything I do during the week for these because basically focusing on FS economy it's not going to be about flights it's just going to be about the choices I'm making and in essence just managing my finances and managing how I run the company if we say that you know I don't have an official company that's not how FS economy works closest you get to that is doing an FBO and so forth I think then you're doing more company management and I will perhaps get into that in the future but that's certainly not a goal right now that is the overall goal however this kickoff video just because it needs to set the stage it needs to do a few more things is likely just going to focus on this initial trip so let me explain how I got here first and give you the background of how I sit here in FS economy with four thousand two hundred thirty five dollars and two cents to my name so I'm over here in logs and this is my full life here in FS economy I have just started out I'm into my second day here in the economy and what I very quickly decided is unlike the the initial version that gets you in where you rent a plane and pick a load and go which is what I did for all of these flights uh, honestly they're all in that type of aircraft and that type of setup I decided you know I saw that you could lease a plane from someone and so I really like the Cessna Citation simply because it's a small plane so I can get it into smaller locations but it's also a fast plane because it's a jet versus a prop so unlike the Cessna Skyhawk that I ran the first couple with you know these things I think took an hour or more to get done even though they were only you know 56 miles or so or they were close to it I mean they took a long time where I've been able to fly some of these small flights you know the the last one I did you can see took 18 minutes you know and and you can see it's 46 or 37 minutes it's double the time for shorter distance with the Cessna Skyhawk so I didn't want to create a situation where I really couldn't do much in FS economy because it was just too too time consuming what I did is I decided and I found someone who was renting a Cessna so I have rented that from them now for a monthly fee of thirty thousand dollars a month that is due on the first of the month and in that case the lease payments we're talking about real world months so when April 1st 2024 comes up I will owe them another thirty thousand I have been prorated for March so it was twenty five thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars that I gave to the individual and that places me here in Sierra Kilo Victor Lima and that is in Colombia it's Velasquez Colombia and so if I go look here in the payment logs you know this this gives me a little bit of an overview here so you can see I've made basically 41,000 I had almost 7,000 in rental expenses there's other fees that occur so I made about thirty thousand dollars and then if we kinda hop down to where we're at here's my payment of twenty five thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars and so I had to go to my second screen so I apologize uh, it took me a little while to find it you won't know that because I'll edit that digging around out on the video here and so you can see my lease payment here but this will help to explain as I go through the log 
So basically, I ran uh, several flights, and I don't know, somewhere around here, uh, I think before I really took these LaGuardia legs. It might have even been before I took this LaGuardia leg. So I may have just flown three flights, said, yep, this works for me because it's the mature simmer if you know anything. You know, as the title of my channel says, simming seriously. That's what I'm looking for. And so when I got introduced to this, dug around, figured I'd give it a try. I'm like, this might be right up my alley because it's it gives me a reason to fly. It gives me a bit of a focus. I've debated doing this as like a role play series where, hey, I'm this pilot and whatever. But invariably, I'm just not great at doing that and being an actor and building any kind of story up. You know, we can talk about it and kind of dabble in that a little bit of, hey, I'm here in Columbia. I'm going to grab this. We can talk about what we think are passengers are doing because we're likely going to be moving a lot of passengers it's not as if i bought a cargo plane here or leased a cargo plane i'm le le ugh. i'm leasing a citation which can carry up to 10 passengers my goal is likely shuttling people around i can carry a little bit of cargo if i need to so basically around this point i decided you know i want to do that and i saw that the rate for this Cessna that I could get was 30000 a month. So I knew that was my target, and I didn't know how fast the individual would respond, so I put in my request through the forums and through then a website that they took me to from the forums where they basically run a leasing operation. Looked at other, other choices because there was, I think, um, BE58 that I could have gotten that was... You know, also quick. It's a faster propeller, and it's available in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But it was twenty-four thousand a month, and I'm like, well, it, that's a smaller plane. It takes less passengers. This just seems to make sense. The only potential benefit of that is I could definitely get into smaller fields. I don't know that flying to grass fields with a Cessna and so forth is going to make a lot of a lot of sense with the Citation. I think that might be pushing things a bit much. So I think I'm going to stay away from that here. So with that, I then needed to basically save up. And the person responded very quickly, and I didn't have money. So I ran some flights, uh, kind of packed things together, as you can see. Uh, really busted my tail to get the money, because initially I was like, oh, it's going to take me a couple days. Hopefully there, you know, you won't be upset, but I won't use the plane until I pay. I just didn't feel that that was fair. So I didn't even take a look at the plane until I was ready to go, which was uh, last night. And then suddenly I saw, you know, so basically that, that was at this point in time at this flight. So at this point I had enough money to pay for my plane. So then I made that deposit that you saw. But then the other piece you see is then sale of wholesale Jet A from... Bogota, which is Sierra Kilo Bravo Oscar. That is where we're heading to now. So I had tried to see if I could fly there, but decided, you know, that's not going to work. So within the FS economy ecosystem, you're able to bring fuel to a stranded airplane, and that, in essence, is how you bring it along as cargo. There's another video that references that and talks about a little bit that shows how I did the bulk fuel purchase. So if you're interested in that, I'll try to remember to link it here. If not, look on the channel. Uh, try to find the FS Economy videos and you should be able to find it. They're, these are all going to appear very close together at this point since I'm just kind of kicking everything off. So with that then, the main thing you do is you, you start in an airport, and so I will cover in this video kind of my the, the, your first flight, like if you're getting into this, what would you do, how would you do things. So you figure out which airport you want to go to, you can search here, you can put in the ICAO code, you can look by city or name, you can say, hey, I want to fly a Cessna CJ4, and you can then pick the CJ4 from the list. You know, there it is. And then you could say, hey, I want it to be rentable. And I'd also like an airport that has some assignments that it can take so that you're not renting an, air, an aircraft that you can't do anything with and then you're just losing money right away. 
you know, and you've got these other things that, that you can look at depending on what you're doing in the future. Or you can just say, hey, I want airports within X number of nautical miles. You can see and go even out to 2,000 nautical miles from somewhere. And you can then just take a job from that location and go. Once you have it, you're then looking for something like this. So in my case, because I've leased it, this plane is locked. It did have a rent button, but at this point, like, I have it for, I think it's like a thousand hours, and I'm sure they'll reset it or, you know, I'll just re-rent it at some point. But if you were doing a typical rental then, there's a citation here which would let you do a good amount of these things. Um, you know, because these are all passengers, you know, and even the cargo is only 417 kilograms. So there's really nothing that you couldn't take from Velasquez with that citation. And if you're using that, then you're may, you've got a couple of things to look at. So first is your rental price, and the rental price and the type of rental, the action, go together. So you can see that this plane is $900 dry per hour and $1,600 wet per hour. Now, I'm also going to try to cover things from my background, which is these things make no sense to me, just like if you're a non-aviation person, they make, may not make any sense to you, but my videos will always lean towards someone who doesn't have any understanding of terminology, so I'll make sure I do my best to try to explain things when I'm sharing information as I am here. So dry and wet does not mean that they just wash the plane and it's going to cost you more because you're flying a wet plane. Uh, what the wet means is it, this is in reference to fuel. So are you buying or renting the plane with fuel, which is rent wet, or are you renting the plane without fuel, which is rent dry? And again, in the theater of the absurd, that doesn't mean you're renting the plane and it doesn't have fuel in it it would have fuel in it you just pay for the fuel you use so in this case the current load is 288 gallons you can see it consumes 165 gallons per hour normally it can hold 860 gallons so part of what you're deciding in FS economy is how much fuel you want the recommendations I've seen from folks and from things in the operations manual is you don't really want to go more than 50% loaded. Now, that said, if I look at this, um, you know, I can only do 10 passengers because I'm limited by the seats. So in some airplanes, you'll see this passenger count or the cargo count go up. But in the case that we have here, basically, if I'm 100% loaded, it takes one passenger away. But if I am anything less, 75 or less, I'm already at the max. So every passenger is 170 pounds in the universe, in the FS economy model. So 10 people would be 1,700 pounds, which I guess translates into 770 kilograms. So in theory, with 100%, you know, it, it, there's some number probably between 75 and 100 where you could take 10 passengers. You just need to figure out where that is and, and what that looks like. You're also then seeing what type of equipment the plane has. So this one can do VFR, IFR, it has an autopilot, it has GPS. And then when you would rent this airplane, the maximum time frame you're going to get is eight hours. And again, that's eight hours of real time. So um, if you're flying, the timer expires, your flight is going to fail. So you can see here, I rented this, took 18, took up the engine time from 301 hours to 33 minutes, from 301 hours and 14 minutes. You know, and this gives you then an idea like as an aircraft owner, I don't have to worry about this with leasing. Uh, the individual that I'm leasing it from covers those costs if I keep it long enough, but this is a good thing to be aware of. Like if I was to own a Cessna at the 100 hour check, you know, which I assume you need to do every 100 hours, what do I need to do? And then 
time before obsolete is what TBO is. So basically at, at 2,000 hours, you need to replace the engine. So I don't know what that looks like. You know, and you can see there's some aircraft repair that took place and so forth. So I'm just trying to also learn as I'm trying to give you information of what I understand. But this is also where it shows you 10 passengers, there's 11 seats, but obviously me as the pilot need a seat. And then the monthly ownership fee, $6,473. I think that helps determine the ground fees and things like that. Basically, what you're deciding here is, in an hour, would you use $700 of fuel? And if so, you're probably better renting wet. But if you don't think you would use that much, or some fraction of, you know, because you'll only get charged for the time you had the plane, then you'd rent it dry and take your chances that fuel's not going to be incredibly expensive. It's usually around $4, $4.50 a gallon. So if I'm doing 165 gallons an hour, that would be $640. So, you know, the $700 is right about correct. So I would say in that model, renting wet might be okay. Then you're, then you're not worried about fuel. You're just paying the amount of time you use the plane and that's it. And, and I think you'll still pay other fees, but just not fuel. All right, so once you've selected your plane, which I would recommend is the thing you're doing, you're then going to go ahead and you're going to then determine what you're going to use that plane for from here. So the issue is, and a lot of times I'll sort by nautical miles, and, you know, we'll, we'll go here. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to include this one because I am going to SKBO and that's partially why there isn't a lot here because I already grabbed some work for my flight earlier. But if you have a type here, T is going to be your most common as you can see. And so I can stack multiple T's together. So if I had cargo going to SKBO that would be awesome because I could just throw it on the plane and you know maybe make an extra five hundred and twenty eight dollars for carrying two kilograms of whatever that is and you can as you can see you know prices do vary you know this two kilograms is just two hundred and twenty three it might be because it's a much closer flight it just depends what the person decided to I think put in there now these that say V these are VIPs. So these people, these two people for the government, or these five corporate passengers that, you know, want to go a good ways, 1,195 nautical miles, they're expecting exclusive use of the plane, where this passenger is not, um, nor are these six and three. So again, if these were going to the same airport, like I could take this and put nine people on my Cessna, and go and so that's that's basically what you're looking at but these expires are in real time so if I grab this and then can't get to it till seven eight hours from now like these six passengers aren't going to be someone I can take because they're outside my window so at this point once you've selected what you want I'm gonna add selected assignments to my flight the drop-down exists because I think if you use groups, you can put things into the group account and then someone in your group can move them. Again, I may get involved in groups later, I may not. So the challenge I had and why I had to bring fuel here just before we're ready, I'm ready to go and then we'll come back and see what things look like. There's zero gallons here. There's no other way to get fuel. Um, you know, it's not sold by bulk. There's just supplies and so forth. So I came to this airport and this plane was here, but this plane had 57 gallons of fuel on it, which doesn't get me very far. So I had to then take that job and, and I found both fuel and something I could transport. The closest airport I could find was the one in Bogota. So I brought a load of passengers along with a barrel of fuel from Bogota so that I could fuel my airplane and get paid for the flight 
which is how I ended up with the cash balance that I have now along with all the other flights that I took. So that was a long way to get you to where we're at but again I'm gonna go ahead now I'm just gonna fly this in the simulator I'm not gonna go ahead and show that I've got plenty of other videos where I'm flying or I'm doing tours or something and other things so if you want Microsoft Simulator flying those I'll, I'll have in other videos the FS economy series is more going to be what jobs am I taking and that's why I think because normally it's just going to be hey I'm in here you're we already know what plane I'm gonna have going forward because until I stop leasing this plane I'm gonna be using this Cessna and it's like alright I found these jobs and I'm gonna take these jobs and I'm gonna go fly this flight and then oh, I'm gonna go fly this flight I'm gonna go fly this flight and so I think it can be very quick it can be you know a few minutes per job and then basically maybe if I just compile everything I do for the week and let you know and then you can follow along if you're interested and then hopefully they'll be relatively quick and succinct videos but again if I flew you know if I fly 10 flights in a week um, maybe they'll, they'll be a little bit longer but I'm making it longer by just babbling so what you do here when you're ready to fly is you now go in here and so you can see I've got seven passengers which it also tells me here and then I'm moving a kilogram of fuel that I wasn't able to load on my plane over to Bogota as well because I can't sell the fuel here so I'm taking a kilogram of cargo as well and so um, you know you can see current load one kilogram of cargo seven passengers which are 539 kilograms and then in theory I've got available space for another 499 kilograms of cargo and three passengers but I should be able to run this plane more full of fuel so likely when I get to Bogota and I'm able to buy fuel there I will go ahead and and get this plane very close to full uh, you know as opposed to the typical recommended 50 percent there's really nothing if I go to my plane here specifically where it shows its least there's no downside like I should be at least at 75% or 80% when I fill because I can always take the full load of passengers and cargo at that point so that's the nice thing with this plane where it doesn't drop off where with others it can and you can see you know this plane significantly more used 1400 hours it's getting really close to that 2000 hours I don't know if I'm going to keep it that long but we'll see but you know um, since the hundred hours it's been what 83 hours 59 minutes so yeah it looks like the hundred hour check was it 1380 but wow it was a lot more expensive than the other one we looked at so let's just take a peek so it had the check it needed different repairs so I think just depending on what happens you might have some unexpected work that needs to be done other than things that are ready on this plane you could have other things that you've taken that that you're holding but you're really encouraged not to hoard things within the system because otherwise then other pilots can't take the work and, and there's less work to go around for everybody in the universe and then for people who are sometimes generating those there may be a, a, a player owned FBO at the airport that is got these passengers spawning that I'm assuming they're making some money off of and if I've got passengers as I free actually have today like I grabbed all these passengers if someone wanted to show up to this airport and haul passengers I've been holding six passengers since last night um, that could have been taken by someone else but I knew I would take them but you can see I'm down a couple of these are down to 13 hours and 16 hours so I need to get them to Bogota so I am gonna go ahead and do that again not really showing how that happens or whatever basically there's an interface that connects my flight simulator to to this but I'm gonna go ahead and fly this flight and then we'll be back here to see how things did and, and we'll wrap up this first initial episode of mature simmers FS economy journey
All right, so I thought a little bit better of this because obviously part of what I'm showing is, you know, how this is going to work. So what will happen here is this is one of the clients. And so you go to Action and Start Flight. And this will now load things. The nice thing with this client versus what's called the SimConnect client is it gives me this type of info. So if I want to fly a realistic flight, and you're not required to do that, but you're obviously encouraged to do so, I need to add 742 pounds to my plane. So I'm dragging the slider over, and now it's telling me remove. So I've gone too far. So it is a bit challenging. Whoops, and now I need to add some. Oh, goodness. All right, so payload is correct, so I hit OK. And now what this has done, this is my fuel. Again, this is showing the return by. It's never actually ticked down, so maybe in the lease it, it just always restarts at 999.59. Um, I mean, it ticked down there once, and now you can see it's loaded what I had in there into into the plane and, and that's what I have going on. So now I go ahead and fly things and then when we're done you know we're gonna see what this fifty six hundred dollars turns into but finding that one additional passenger this morning is certainly a benefit. So just a quick view so if you're using this kind of again the first time through if you refresh the website once you're flying you're going to see that there's a flight in progress. If you have a problem in some way, your SIM or your computer crashed, you just cancel the flight and start again. It's not that realistic that it's like, oh, you've destroyed the plane, it's now gone or whatever. Uh, there are other products that I'll likely be showing, such as Neofly or things like that, that take some of that into account a little bit more. You know, at this point, that is not what we're dealing with here. But at this point, I'm going to finish flying to Bogota. And this time, I will see you when I'm there. All right, so I am here in Bogota. And so basically, what we do now is we apply the parking brake. And you can see it logs the flight. So your flight is logged. Results can be found on the website. So again, because the website is a website. It doesn't refresh. So at this point, if I refresh here, you can see now I have no flight. I still have the plane because the plane is in my name. You know, we're down to 169 gallons. We're down to 20%. 20 but you can see our cash balance has gone up to $8,883. So if I go over here to my log, and you know, we can see this is actually one of our bigger paydays. So the one thing I really wanted to see here is what gets charged. All right, so because I have to fuel the plane myself, I'm not getting a fuel charge. Uh, you know, it gave me time, but there's no rental amount because basically the 30000 lets me use the plane as much as I want. But what we'll hit is the ground fee and the booking fee is going to be something that is still going to get pulled out and without owning an aircraft outright I'm not entirely sure you know I think this ground fee is 10 percent of the income but then I don't remember if what the booking fee comes from I should say I'm unfamiliar with what the booking fee comes from but this was the reason I really wanted to get my first run in because I wanted to understand because once again if I can do this you know if I can do a flight like this regularly you know eight hundred dollars an individual was not unheard of uh, and this was I think eight you know so I could have put two more on here so that would have given me another sixteen hundred dollars that would have put me up to seventy two hundred dollars of income you know, I'd be in good shape there. Now, I'm going to go to my goods here, and I should see a kilogram. If I try to sell this, there you go. So I'm going to get a whole dollar and ten, but that way I don't have fuel sitting around on the planet somewhere. And so if I click on SKBO, now what we get to see here, which is important, is like I have 
places I can buy jet fuel from now. So that is what I'm going to go ahead and do. So if I go back here to this and I hit the refuel button, this is how you fuel a plane and you can see I have unlimited amounts at the local market which tends to be a little bit more expensive. And again, I do not know if Sol de Latino America is something other than that. So, and this gives you a nice capacity chart here so we can see, you know, 100% is 860. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy from the Sol de Latino America. And the difference here with refueling the aircraft is you are filling to a certain amount. So you are not telling it, oh, I want to buy 300 gallons. You're telling it what you want to be at. So I'm going to say I want to be at 700 so that I'm not playing this game of being light on fuel because I'm below 20% right now. I only moved 186 gallons with 500 kilograms. So I'm going to refuel. You'll see that now took my balance to 6,900, but I'm at 81%. And I should still probably be able to run a full flight. But you can see something like Bogota is quite, quite busy. So if you're unsure when you're in here, what you want to do, like you can click on aircraft and it will only show aircraft that can handle a passenger, which is going to be pretty much anything with seats unless you have a cargo aircraft. So again, here, three, you know, there's a patient transport here. It's a VIP, less than one day. You know, you can see it's 141 miles and so forth. And you can see there's some large jobs sometimes. So something, you know, you've got to take this as a block. So I can't say I want 10 of these 34. Like I couldn't take this with this aircraft. And that's where, again, the aircraft button helps you because it shows you what you can do. And if you're renting, then you can see if there's an aircraft like that in the area or available for you here. Similarly, I can't take 2,000. I can't technically even take the 510, I don't think. So yes, if you look, aircraft that can carry cargo, 510, uh, you know, that that shows you what you can do. And you can see the citation is not here. So I am capped at 500 in cargo. It's not like, oh, I can throw extra cargo in and so forth. You know, but any of these, for example, like I could take any of these corporate jet hires here for 16,000, 14,000. But again, I've got to be careful because they're 1,000 miles. I mean, they're, they're a good ways. They may be taking me further into South America. I'd have to really see. But see, this is where it's intriguing. And again, I can't do these together because I'd have to take the blocks. But if I could take 12 passengers, these are both going to the same airport. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you. So this is in Venezuela. This one's in Guyana. You know, so at least if you kind of know your geography a little bit, you know, similarly here, I can take 13 here to Venezuela again, or you can just take the individual ones. And sometimes, and this is where I think it will become interesting over time, because if I have seven passengers here, you know, if I took seven, you know, seven here at 937 and 859, and again, they're two different airports, so... You know, but basically a thousand dollars, that's seven thousand dollars where this is paying me sixteen. Like this might actually not be a bad job. It's a long job. Um, but that's part of again the nice thing with the Cessna is I have those options. Again, it's gotta be done within the next three days. And you know, the difference is so I, I actually misspoke because even though these are going to the same location, VIPs expect that the the plane is theirs. I cannot take both of these. I would have to pick one or the other. All right. And then the other type of job you're going to have is what's called an all-in job, which is this A job. And literally, they're just hiring you to fly the plane. You know, but this is where it gets interesting because you can see I'm just kind of going to scroll rather than look just so you can see the sheer volume of things that are coming out of this airport. Now again, this is a large airport, so the two runways kind of indicate that. There's a little F on top there that shows that there is fuel available uh, in bulk. 
at this airport and the little hash marks around it that you can barely see show that you know you could buy fuel directly for the plane but the F above is bulk fuel which is what I needed to get to bring it back so you can see here all in trip trip only or VIP so those are the type of things and flights include all bills you know all in flights include all bills for aircraft fuel landing fees so basically you're getting paid that amount in an all-in so if I took this like I know I would walk away with nine thousand four hundred and forty seven there's nothing deducted from that this is a military a military thing so you can see it's an I think an Air Force base I think that's what AB German Oleano AB 56 miles from here and I think there's uh, S which is a seaplane you know and then these single runways are, are what are called small airports and then the ones that have nothing there was I think just one that is like an open circle here those are the smallest they're basically I think airfields is how they're classified so the last piece to share with you just so you understand when you're renting we talked about dry and wet but what we didn't talk about was the bonus because there wasn't a plane showing any of that so this is critical when you're making a decision to rent because this my understanding and I can certainly understand why this would be a problem this is telling you that this person has set a rental basically what they'd like to do is keep their plane near their home location so you can see like this plane belongs in Omaha in the US so that heading wise is basically north west from here and what this tells you that so it's an indicator error they're, they're basically going to be eight of them you know they're going to be cardinal directions north south east or west or the diagonals there's there's not really kind of an in-between and so if you head in the direction when there's a bonus of the bonus you will get potentially up to that bonus if you head away so you fly the plane further away from Omaha in a direction that doesn't get you closer you're going to in essence incur a penalty and so if you have something with a substantial bonus just you know make sure when you rent that you're heading in the right direction or you may be unpleasantly surprised with what you get and I've seen bonuses that are sometimes you know a thousand or five hundred so typically they t they say you know if it's a hundred or less you can kind of ignore it so like this twenty three dollar one here um, you know is really the only one I'm seeing that technically I mean 119 is close enough this tells you what the plane is equipped with so most we're, are gonna have what we have which is an IFR AP GPS you know and you can see there's a lot of um, CJ force here none of them are for rent there was one here that I took that now is sitting in the other airport that I took to use to get fuel and then take passengers because they needed to be heading back to where I was at the only other thing you need to understand when you're renting is these icons so basically this kind of white background tool tells you the plane is in need of repair so you can rent it but just be aware then you're, you need to repair it before you can use it or it needs to be repaired before it can be used so basically uh, you can't do anything with this unless you own the craft tools with green behind it means they are allowing uh, someone who rents the plane to repair it and then you can see that anything with an asterisk is privately owned so like these planes are part of the FS economy universe they're basically supplied by by the community where anything with an asterisk which obviously includes mine which is here uh, is owned by an individual now I've heard things that basically only 20 percent of the aircraft on the network are owned by uh, pr private individuals everything else is owned by the community so this is probably pretty unique in that I would say most of these planes look like they're personally owned but you know Bogota's kind of got a name to it and and so forth so 
you know, but you can see we can buy the fuel here, which is what the F at the top is. So if you needed to buy bulk fuel to take it somewhere, you can do that. And then you've also got materials that you can go ahead and work on. And so I would think there's jobs that people say, hey, I, I need X kilograms of something moved and then you can purchase it and then they'll, you know, obviously pay you on the other end. So what I have found in this community to kind of wrap things up and close this down, if you are looking to fly airliners, there aren't a lot of airliners here. This is not a community that is going to have things available, uh, at least not to rent. I mean, you can buy an airliner and then fly an airliner here, but you're going to need tens of millions of dollars before you can afford that. You know, so if you go into purchase aircraft, like you can look for you know, you can put in a model and say, you know, I want to do an Airbus and then just search and you can see there aren't any for sale. And these are private sales. So I don't know that you'd even be able to to purchase planes that, you know, of that size. I've I've looked at like the two main aircraft there and that's what I've seen as nothing. So the fact is they're listed here which makes me think that you can do something with them. I mean the other possibility so I'm just kind of showing you how to use the interface a little bit. So let's say I want an Airbus and I can just do that and see. So there are Airbuses around. Let's go to Dublin and so see this Airbus like it exists um, but you can see it's it's reserved for an all-in. So basically if I wanted to take this one then I believe I could go ahead and do that and then take the 119. But what you're able to do when you're in an aircraft you can see how many are for sale. And so you can see there aren't any for sale. So I don't really know how these work if they're even possible. They may just be so expensive that the community just determines like no one could ever save up enough money you know so for example if I go into the Cessna Citation X like there's nine for sale you can click on it and then it will show you where they are and you can decide and, and there's the price and how much engine time and airframe time they have you know when the hundred hours due would be uh, usually would be filled in I'm surprised it's not filled in yet there but it isn't you know, and you can see, like, some of these are um, not private owned. So it's not just, oh, well, the reason I'm not seeing Airbuses is nobody owns one and doesn't want to sell it. Like, it does look like the game allows you to to do it or allows you to, to, to purchase them. I just don't know how often or if they come up. That may be something I ask the community because I'm frankly curious about it. Um, you know, I don't know that I'd ever get to the point where I could afford that because you know, maybe this is one of the larger ones. So if I look at these, let's see. Yeah. So I was just looking at the rental price. So you can see, I mean, this is potentially $11 million for this aircraft. I'm not that familiar with what it is. But, you know, if you look at it, I mean, it takes 82 passengers, 14,000 pounds of cargo. So you know it's got a decent opportunity and you can see like the cargo changes a good amount by the amount of fuel you have while the passenger load you're able to take a full passenger load so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up at this point because that kinda really gets me you know where I need to be obviously I'll be back looking for something to take in the future these some of these will expire the ones that start to become days hours whatever they may or may not be here like here there's one for one hour so that passenger needs to be delivered in an hour you know it's only 49 miles away in theory you know I could get there if I if I wanted to take that and had the time to do it right now um, oh I guess before I leave one other key point I knew there was something niggling in the back of my mind so the one thing that I did find interesting the airports in game do not necessarily correspond size wise to what they are in the real world so Bogota is likely a big airport 
in the real world and just happens to be that here in the game but you may find that airports that you would expect to be large are not in game and vice versa you may find some tiny airport that's given small or large airport status in this universe and you know it's a one runway airport or something but it's going to have tons of of things now again i think the number of runways or the yards of runway determine how big it is is what i saw in the game that's kind of the determining factor like uh, you know i think it has to have like over 12,000 meters of runway or something to be a large airport you know, Bogota's got two over 12,000 meter runways, so clearly it's easily classified that. But you could have a field that is uh, close in space there that, uh, you know, is at that borderline that maybe gets classified a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Um, so it looks like, yeah, here there's some that are expired. I'm not quite sure why they're here, maybe because I've been on the screen for 28 minutes that's possible because yes if I'm back down here like I don't see it anymore so I think it was just that I hadn't refreshed but yeah I think you start to see the nuance a little bit of, of you know kind of picking and choosing and what are you gonna do my intent at least what I think I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get this aircraft back to the US uh, and you know it may be one long flight or I may just take hops up through Central America uh, because if, if there's one thing I've seen it does seem you, that you're better off taking uh, shorter flights that you can then work with because you can sort by any of these columns so a lot of times I'll do exactly this where I'll take the nautical miles and you know for example like this might not be a bad option although it it, it is going south but you know I can I can take a good amount of passengers yeah they're only six hundred and fifty one dollars you, know, you still get ten of them you're you're gonna get sixty five hundred dollars so that's not bad especially for a 41 mile leg but those are the type of decisions that that I have to make when I finally come in and do it and I, I may fly later today I may not but this is something new that I'm getting involved in so as I've shared you know, give me your feedback. Is this something interesting? And, and my thought is, once again, is an example of what I'm thinking. Like, I'd come in here, I'd say, all right, I've made the decision. I'm going to take these 10 people. I'd, in essence, show you my flight. I'd go do the flight. I'd then come back, show you, okay, here's what we made. And I would compile the flights that I did together for a week and make a video out of that kind of on a weekly basis and then you would be able to keep up with what I'm doing in FS economy but I'm not sure that it makes much sense because the uniqueness of FS economy is is this is doing this stuff and picking your loads and deciding what you're doing and then all right hey I've gotten enough money because again I think to buy a Cessna I need a couple you know a couple million dollars just to be sure to buy the plane that I'm renting right now so I've got a long way to go before I would do anything you know all time will tell we'll see where this goes but just uh, do you think that format would would make sense would you watch it would you propose something else so with that if you are not a subscriber or uh, you've enjoyed the video and haven't liked it please consider those things and I will see you next time